Hello again, everybody. We're up to chapter nine now. So we've only got four chapters to go to finish the book. But before we get on to chapter nine, let's just think about what happened in chapter eight. If you remember, the last thing that happened was Mrs. Craven must have been able to escape from her room somehow. And she'd opened the classroom door and she and Ben had been swept down the corridor. She was screaming behind Ben, sounding like a sea monster. And Ben really hadn't got a clue what was going on. Let's read on, see what happens next. Chapter nine is called Help. Everything had gone black and still and silent. A strange echoey silence, as though any noise was a long, long way away. Ben thought he was probably dead. He decided he'd either been eaten by Mrs Craven, who must have turned back into a giant sea monster, or he had drowned in the huge waves, or he had crashed into the wall at the end of the corridor. Ben wondered what his mum would say when she found out. Probably say it was all his own fault and he must have been messing about as usual. Something was lifting Ben. Up, 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 out of the blackness, out of the stillness away from the strange, echoey silence. Perhaps he wasn't dead after all. Ben felt himself being hoisted out of the water by a pair of strong arms. The water made a loud sucking noise and Ben emerged, spluttering and blinking, his legs hanging limply like two pieces of cooked spaghetti. Ben blinked open his eyes. He blinked again trying to clear them and found himself staring straight into a pair of thick, black-rimmed glasses. The eyes behind them were hugely magnified, wide open and staring. Staring straight back at Ben, as though now he was some sort of strange sea monster. It was Mr McCann and he was still halfway up the ladder. Only now the ladder was wobbling dangerously as Mr McCann struggled to hold Ben out of the water and keep himself steady. Ben grabbed at the sides of the ladder and lowered himself carefully onto the nearest step. His whole body felt like jelly. What on earth? Mr McCann shouted, keeping one eye on Ben and the other on the swirling water. What on earth is going on? Ben opened his mouth to answer, although he wasn't at all sure what he was going to say. I, I, he began, his teeth chattering, but the rest of the sentence was drowned out by the horrendous screaming that was getting closer and closer and louder and louder. Mr McCann turned his head and looked back over his shoulder. At the same time, something large and heavy crashed into the side of the stepladder, knocking its legs so hard that they skidded along the floor in the opposite direction to the platform at the top. Ben found himself being catapulted up in the air alongside a very bemused-looking Mr McCann. The last thing he noticed before flying through the office hatch and landing on Mrs Brooks' desk was Mrs Craven, soaking wet and shaking but hanging on desperately to one leg of the stepladder. So that was what had crashed into them, thought Ben, before collapsing on top of a pile of letters informing parents that Mrs Craven took water safety very seriously and to please ensure your children remember their swimming kits every week. Mrs Brooks, luckily, was nowhere to be seen. She got cross if you came to the hatch and asked a question without knocking. What she would do to a child flying through the hatch and landing on her desk in his swimming trunks was almost too much to bear thinking about. There was also no sign of Mr McCann. Ben decided he must have crashed into the wall beside the hatch. After all, there was no way Mr McCann could have flown through it like he had. Ben giggled to himself at the thought of Mr McCann getting stuck in the hatch, his top half in the office, his bottom half in the corridor, arms and legs waving in the air. Ben crawled on all fours across the desk, leaving a wet trail behind him like a giant snail. He knelt up and peered through the hatch. The water had reached the front door and looked as though it was waiting to be let out. Ben watched, open-mouthed, as Mr McCann heaved himself into an upright position and waded against the tide towards Mrs Craven. She had scrambled onto the fallen ladder and was now sitting cross-legged on top, as though on board some homemade life raft. Mrs 
Her hair was stuck to her head. Her glasses were nowhere to be seen and one of her dangly earrings was hanging from a button on her blouse. In her left hand, she held a metre rule, which looked as though it was about to become a makeshift oar. Ben wondered whether Mrs Craven knew that you would get, wouldn't get far with just one oar. In fact, you would probably only go round in circles. Ben would have been quite happy for Mrs Craven to start rowing with the ruler. At least it would give him a chance to make the escape. And that's the end of chapter nine. Thanks for listening. And I hope you're excited to hear chapter 10 tomorrow night. See you then. Bye.